good Wednesday morning. Basketball around these parts, well, it just flat out blows. The Knicks and the Nets, all their issues, and the trade deadline, and James Harden, and there's more issues there. Now you got R.J. Barrett injury, and the Knicks get blown out. It's just impossible to get yourself excited about either one of those two teams, but maybe the Knicks will trade for Harrison Barnes. Exciting stuff as we approach the trade deadline tomorrow. Got a bunch of other stuff to get into. Another massive beef between radio station employees that I just saw this morning, and Jerry's watching porn in the newsroom. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, good morning. Happy hump day. Yeah, Because hump that's day. exactly what it is, man, as the uh, the Bengals and the Rams obviously are in the Super Bowl city now. The Rams obviously playing there, but uh, the Bengals arrived. And, you know, this is uh, the time where you start thinking about, okay, what is Sunday going to be like? You know, all the different machinations that you kind of put your brain through. Uh, most of the game plan has already been put in the week before. And uh, now it, and now you start focusing in and zoning in on getting ready for the game. And there's still distractions uh, surrounding you. I think it's tougher for the Rams because they're at home. Yeah. And, you know, when you're at home, you got all sorts of issues. You got ticket issues. You got this. Yeah. You know, we can get somebody in the game. Somebody's calling your family. Your family's calling you. Um, I have to say it was a relatively – uneventful Super Bowl from that regard for me because everything was taken care of the week before. I didn't want to have anything to deal with the week of. I don't need that nonsense in again, your life. But then again, you know, we, we and the 49ers both had to go to Miami to go play our Super Bowl. I, you know, being the hometown team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, worked out pretty well for them last yeah. year. And I just wonder, you know, what kind of distractions that is for the home team. You know, when your family's around and everybody wants tickets to go to the game and, you know, is your, is your front door turnstile right now? Yeah. With all the guests and everybody that wants to be a part of it. And I'm not sure if the Rams moved to a different hotel during the week. I would think maybe that would be the case. I don't I don't know whether or not Tampa Bay did that I'd have or not. Sleep on Skid Row and really get them all fired yeah. up. Get them fired in up a down tent there. So with all that, the cheese addicts. So <laughs> the cheese addicts. So that, you know, that's kind of a interesting uh kind of sidebar story coming out of the Super Bowl. But um, you know, it was is our basketball teams right here now just are absolutely brutal. Ugh. And Look, I, I was watching a little bit of the TNT broadcast last night. Were you? And the part that I was watching between the Nets and the Celtics, uh, their sideline reporter was talking about, uh, you know, rumors and innuendo, you know, all that kind of stuff that's following a lot of these teams and whether or not teams are going to be trading players or what, what's happening. And it was interesting that he used the word saga. We got a saga? When it came, when it came to James Harden. Well, wow, so you like, had a Kyrie saga, they, now you got a Harden saga? You got a double saga going on wow. over there in Brooklyn with two good, with two players. Man. And, uh, you know, I guess James Harden was not on the bench in the first half. But then, because, you know, of course, Adidas New York is is promoting a new jacket that they have. He had to come out in the jacket. It, he, it, it was almost like it was a model coming out of a runway uh, and then go sick. finally sitting on the on the uh, the bench in the new, uh, uh, I guess, the Adidas black hoodie that he was wearing. Yeah, which was. So it was good. So I don't know if New York Adidas is going to be able to do that in two days or not. Uh, I guess we'll see. But uh, it, it's really fascinating. Like, if you just look at the Nets over the last three years and look what they've been through, look what they've done, look who they've signed, how much money they spent. You know, you had the first year that was Kyrie didn't want to play during the COVID uh, bubble. Uh, you had Kevin Durant didn't play at all. And then you have the next year where Kyrie disappeared. And then Kevin Durant, you know, tries to get Harden to come and he comes. And then they only play a couple games together and they get beat in the playoffs. And then you have this year where Kyrie's not taking the shot and he's not going to play at all. And then he is going to play. Then he's in. He's out. He's, you know, road games only. I mean, it has been like three years of just complete madness yeah. around the Brooklyn Nets. And it's the only joy that I've had in local <laughs> basketball this year is watching them fall apart. And what was it, 28-2 to two at one point last night? That's how yeah, ugly that the game was. Team. I mean, that's not their I team. Still, I still, mean, I don't care. It is their team. They've got the, they got the name on the front of the jersey. They can't have Kyrie play. James Harden's got this hamstring thing that God knows if it's even real or not. And Kevin Durant's out. Great. Awesome. That's what I want to see. I want to see them all hurt or all screwed up or all somewhere else and have this thing just die. Die a slow, miserable death. So all these net fans 
that got all excited about getting Kevin Durant and James Harden I'm and a Kyrie, loser. Kyrie Irving, all these people that were getting in the Knicks' face. You just get laughed at for the rest of time as this is, will be the biggest failure in the history of basketball. So that's the only thing that brings me joy <laughs> oh, is that. <laughs> yes, now, right. unfortunately, you know, for the Knicks, yeah. they're, they're almost as embarrassing. No, but they've been embarrassing for a long time, so we're kind of used to we're, it. Yeah, we're used to and it. We're numb to the fact that the Knicks I mean, are going nowhere. And then you see guys that would be great on the Knicks, like, like, uh, like Halliburton from Sacramento go to Indiana – and then you're like, well, where the hell are the Knicks? Now you say it all the time. Where is Leon Rose? What are you doing? I have no idea. What Nobody he's doing. knows what he's doing. Where he is? I, I keep saying it. I don't so know what you, else you took this say. team, you got us all excited last year, and now they're back to sucking on an epic level with a superstar who doesn't. He's not even a superstar. A guy that you want to be your best player who doesn't even want to be there, and then the guy who should be your best player playing in a game when you're down a hundred points in the fourth quarter with ten <laughs> seconds to go and leaves with an ankle injury. So what the hell are you guys doing? It is a mess. But man. go trade for Harrison Barnes. That'll do it. We need I mean, another. We need another. We break. need another wing player. It's the same thing as Cam Reddish. He's the. I mean, it's like he played the same position. You don't even give Cam Reddish a shot, but because Thibodeau likes Harrison Barnes bring in Harrison Barnes just to keep going around and around and around swirling they suck they'll never get out of it they're always a pick away from changing things it's just you know and the winters around here are just impossible they're just impossible to get through <laughs> and all you want is a goddamn crumb from the basketball teams and you can never get it well, well I mean hockey. I guess you get it with the Nets a little bit because they were in the playoffs last year and so were the Knicks but then the Knicks make it to the playoffs get their asses kicked <laughs> By Boyan Bogdanovich, Trey Young, <laughs> Kevin Herter, John Collins, and the Atlanta Hawks look like the freaking Golden State Warriors last year. Sorry, but my hockey team's doing well. Yeah, I know, and they're not playing right now. But yeah, yeah. They, they don't get started again until next week. It's just, I mean, basketball. It's just, <laughs> it really does. The fo- just think about brutal. the football teams and the basketball teams around here. It's just a disaster. And then on top of that, we got the baseball lockout. Pure, yeah, and then you don't even have that. You don't even have that to yeah, talk about we, and get excited about. But we are, about. but we are. Here's the good news. Yeah. We are getting an old timers game for the Mets. Oh, well, that's right. Yes. You think this is the first time ever that we're going to get a home? <laughs> I mean, there's some people that think that we've never had an old timers game. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that, that was the, the genesis of the Twitter beef that I had alluded to. Oh, man, you're all over this stuff. I just want, can I just, like, you get scuttlebutt <laughs> and then you get, like, well, this- you get, like, inside info about people going after each other. I don't. Well, this the one I can't take. Thing. You know, I appreciate that, and there there are times that that happens. But this one was, you know, someone tagged me in these tweets back and forth, so that's why I saw it this morning. Wow. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I guess our our night host Keith McPherson said his take on the Mets old timers day is that the Mets were trying to be the Yankees. How how dare he say that? How dare he How say that? How dare he say that? He said, uh, quote, I'm tired of the Mets trying to one-up the Yankees. What? One-up up the Yankees? What are you talking about? The Mets are trying to be the Yankees. It's corny. Mets, do your own stuff. Well, doesn't he realize, maybe he doesn't realize because he's, he's got his head so far up the Yankees' arse, um, that uh, that the Mets have always had a whole timers game since the day they started, except you know for the last few years they stopped it. So who knows Mets' history? Better than one Howie Rose. Oh, yeah. Howie who climbs Howie up Rose. on the top rope and drops an elbow on Keith McPherson. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. He came down. Boom. He said, take this. Okay. This is a particular. This is Howie's tweet. Okay. This is a particularly uninf- <clears throat> uninformed, ignorant, and ridiculous take. Wow. Right there. That's a strong opening uh, tweet there by Howie Rose. The Mets have staged Old Timers Day since their first season in 1962. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it ceased to be an annual event, but their fans have clamored for its return. One up the Yankees? How? And then here's here's the big the big Uh-oh. line to end All the right. tweet. Get a clue. Boom. Get a clue. That's what I'm talking about, Howie. Oh. But then again, like it's I feel like I want to I should defend like the guy that's on our team. Keith. McPherson. I'm not doing that anymore. No, you know, not defending anybody. You're anymore. not defending anybody anymore. Screw it. They're out on an island now. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, just, defend I, me. You know, I, I, I tried. I tried to defend people, but I mean, I, I don't know. Kind of feel like we're simpatico with the afternoon guys, though. Which is crazy. After all the years of morning and afternoon fighting. Yes. That's like, <laughs> that's where the friendships lie. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> 
It's like, you know, when I was going through uh, my anxiety issues, the, the one guy from the radio station who called me was Craig Carton. He was the guy who called me. Wait a minute, I gave you a hug. Well, you, I was with you all day. Yeah, but I gave you a hug, and I was with you all day. Yeah. I was there supporting you. No, I know. I'm not saying you didn't. We were together all day. You did an amazing job. I'm talking about the out of this show. Oh. Because we're talking oh, about who we're, who, we're, who we're cool with out well, of this show. I didn't show. know you went to Craig Carton. I didn't. He came to me. It was very nice. He called. He cares. He cares. Well, look at that. Look at that. Morning and afternoon bliss. <laughs> but everything else, and now everybody's fighting with each other. With uh, Evan McPherson and Howie Rose and uh, Tiki and Tierney and uh, Stephen A. Smith and everything else. <laughs> oh, Sal and I are, are close. Sal and I have been very close for a long time. We were roommates. <laughs> Sal said he's not going to call people morons anymore. I was very disappointed in Why? that. He said, I, I don't Why know. Why is he backing off? Maybe Spike told him to stop doing that. I don't but know. That's he's, his go-to. He I know. says it at least once a call. I know. That's like uh, like the Rolling Stones saying, I'm not playing Start Me Up any longer. Like, what are I you doing? I think that's almost impossible. There's no way that he could just stop doing something that he has done so many times. I, he, ju- he said he's not going to call people idiots and morons any longer and scream at that. But he, it's, there's no way he's going to be able to control himself in those spots. Somebody will call him in and charge him up. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Are you moron? That's just, that's just his go-to. So I don't know if that was a, a, a directive from uh, – who's that there talking? Is that That's Spike? our boss, Spike. Did, uh... he, did he tell him to, to nope. stop calling him? I don't, no so directives about morons. Wow. I thought maybe he told him, hey, listen. It wasn't maybe. an internal memo or anything? Nope. No. And, and, quote, I like it when he yells at people. <laughs> so what? Yeah. So he's got a every, – doesn't everybody – Except the, maybe the person on the line, but screw that person. It's about the rest of the people listening. Yeah, I don't know. He's better go back and tell Sal. Listen, we're all in on cold people morons. Do you think? Uh, do you think we need like a company retreat? Oh, that, well, that's what I was hoping the Super Bowl week would be for us. Would be like a retreat to L.A. and the hippy dippy California life and the eighty six degree weather and the weed smoking and the right. spas and all of that stuff. Spas? You were going to go to a spa? Oh, I was. That's what I was hoping for. I don't see you as a spa guy. Well, I would have been that week. I would have been a spa guy. Would have been a spa guy. I would, I would have done everything. Everything to relax. It would have been tremendous. That's what I was looking for. But yeah, I mean, it seems like the 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 winter and the bad sports and all the issues and the Nets fans are pissed and the Knicks fans are pissed. And the Jets and Giants don't have that much to be excited about. But the, Gi- the Giants actually do have. They put together a nice little staff, didn't they? They, they, they did. And, and, and they got welcome. an inexperienced head coach. But, I mean, outside of that, they well, put together a nice little staff. A crazy defensive coordinator. Yeah. That's going to be blitzing all over the place and playing a lot of man coverage. Kind of so like that. I, I, th- I think that, you know, his track record speaks for itself early on, especially when, you know, they were relatively healthy down there in Baltimore. But he's a personality, that's for sure. I mean, he's got a little Rex Ryan in him. Yeah. Well, it's great. And he's going to – What I we think, need around him. And I think guys like playing for him. And I and it sounds like, from all indications, that people love playing for Brian Dable. So you have you have the main guy. you got a defensive coordinator now. Uh, you know, this is going to be – I think it's going to be – it should be interesting. If well, anything else, it's going to be interesting and it should be fun. And these guys are going to bring an intensity to this team that I think if you're a Giant fan, at least right now, you got to be relatively happy about this. I, I would like to know why, with all the success that they had there in Baltimore, that he was no longer. I think I think it just kind of ran its course. He had been there for 10 years. This year, they fell off the face of the earth. And a lot of that had to do injuries. with COVID issues and yeah. injuries and everything else. And by the way, remember John Harbaugh brought back the defensive coordinator that he had sent to Michigan, Wait. probably to see whether or not he can handle it with his brother. Mm-hmm. And Michigan's defense was great this year. It's one of the reasons why they were in the uh, Final Four in college football. And then uh, John Harbaugh hired that guy back. I think it was McDonald, I think. I want to say, yeah, th- something like that. Anyway. Oh, whatever. So maybe it just ran its course. You know, sometimes these, these guys get in, into one place a little bit too long and uh, – they recognize the split is good, and this probably will, will refresh Wink Martindale as well. Yeah, you hear this? Giants fans always uh, get on us for being too negative about the Giants. I actually like, uh, outside of Brian Dable, I like the staff that they're putting together. Outside of Brian Dable? Why yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, don't, I didn't think. I wanted to see an experienced head coach for them. I did. And I can't just all of a sudden turn on a dime now and just be like, oh, I think it's great. But I know I did the, the Kafka thing I thought was really smart. And I think that uh, the Wink Martindale, I think, is smart, too. I like that. And I also like the fact that they were able to raid the 
Eagles front office for a very, very smart guy from all accounts. Like to beat the man. Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown. I told you they were going to end up with him. I thought he was going to be the general manager, but. So I I think they've done a nice job there. Yeah. So there you go. All right. So they cleaned house. They're in the process of, uh, you know, going through all the different stuff that went on at the Senior Bowl and everything else. Uh, Joe Shane is now looking at his uh, scouting department, looking at how they do things over there, changing things. And I, I think from, I, I would think from a Giants fan stand, fan standpoint, you, you got to be pretty excited about what's happening. I'm like the change is happening, right? It's yeah, significant. Now you just got to blow up that crap roster that you got, and then you'll move in the right direction. But I also will tell you that, you know, uh, Wink Martindale, mainly a 3-4 kind of defensive guy. Okay. Which I, which I love. I love the 3-4. I'm not a, a – a, the 4-3 is not something that – it's easier for me as a quarterback to understand a 4-3. And, but if you have a defensive tackle like, I don't know, Aaron Donald, then, then you want to play a 4-3. You want that guy in there, and you mm-hmm. want him um, creating havoc. But I do like a, a 3-4 defense – a lot of these defenses play with nickel and dime defenses anyway, but the one thing I will say about him, he will bring an energy to that defense. You know, Patrick Graham wasn't all that much of an energy guy. I, yeah. I never felt that. Just felt like he had the respect of the locker room. The guys liked playing for him, and they did a, a reasonably good job. This guy is going to come in here, and I, I, the only reason I compare him to this next coach is because people around here know the coach, and the guy – the other coach that I'm going to compare him to had, has had success in the NFL a lot of different places. It's just that he went a little off the, the reservation here in uh, in New York, and that is uh, Greg Williams. Sure. Like a lot of the same type of tendencies, aggressive, getting after the, the opposing quarterback, a lot of different blitzes. Let's hope he's not stamming everybody in the back like Greg Williams did. Well, true, right. So, But you just got to make sure that you're sound. Yep. And that's up to Brian Dable to make sure that he's actually watching what Wink Martindale is doing and is collectively making sure that it all comes together and that it all fits his vision because he is the boss. Like, you don't have co-bosses here. Yeah. You have one boss. The head coach is the boss. And and when you bring in somebody and you interview somebody, you got to make sure that that person understands that he is going to follow your wishes, assuming that your wishes are the right, you know, the right wishes, the right uh, professional uh, aspect of the game. So – you just hope that you don't have, like, co-bosses here. Yeah, you don't Brian need Dable that. Brian cannot just let Wink Martindale just run the defense. All right, it is Boomer and Geo on the Fan and CBS Sports Network. 